Mark, Mach 9 at 9,700 feet per second. Columbia, you got perfect energy, perfect ground track. Roger that. Columbia now nine times the speed of sound. Flight dynamics officer says we're showing you rolling perfect. right. Looking good. Right, I'm all rolling. Rolling now. Chase will be on time. Okay. Altitude 152,000 feet, range 311 miles, speed Mach 8.8. .8. Roll reversal complete. Columbia, we show you out of 151K now, 8.4 Mach, looking good. Roger that, Dan. I got a solid tank in lock on uh, tank in two and three. Roger that, Crip. We're looking. Three APUs hanging in there, looking good. Roger that. We can cut. We have a live television picture from the yeah, optical the tracker at Anderson right? Peak. Crossing the coastline okay, now. Show you crossing the coast now. Roger that. We can cut. 141,000 feet. Range 240 okay, miles. Attack hands, go ahead and take them. Okay, going in. Here, three minutes. Mark. Columbia, we see you coming right, looking good. Okay, Joe, I'm having a hard time seeing the talk backs on those landing gear hydraulic isolation. He's 83,000 feet now. Columbia, we see you coming right, looking good. Roger that. Okay, Columbia, we see you coming right, looking good. Okay, Columbia, we see you coming right, looking good. Okay, Columbia, we see you coming right, looking good. Okay, Columbia, we see you coming right, looking good. Okay, Columbia, we see you coming right, Mark, let's start a right turn for the IP. Going right. Altitude, 79,000. On Terry's 295, 30 and a half. Right around the track. The, uh, track You're going to uh, be a little late. He's now 30026. All right, we can try. Right turn for the IP. Now, 30024 and a half. Here, two minutes. Mark. 70,000 feet. The frontier, three, one, zero, eighteen. Columbia, we show you Tally a very high in altitude, coming down nicely. Tally-ho. Uh, 3519. Chase has a tally-ho. 4,000. Don't go hot. 320, 14 and a half. Chase has a tally. 50 seconds. Mark. as a talent. Point three G's coming. 
around the hack. Roger that. And turn it on to final. Your winds on the surface are calm. Back on a wind. Mark 20,000. Mark 20,000. That's real good underneath. Everything looks real good. Five thousand two ninety. They're coming. They're down. Fifty feet. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Touchdown. Those gears. Ten feet. Five. Down. Look about, Skipper. Back up, Chase, above you, Big Jones. Houston, Columbia is on the road, huh? Welcome home, Columbia. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's go one, two, three, one, two. Big Jones. Houston, Columbia is on the road. Welcome. 
That's a good picture, John, coming down. Looks like John Young's not going to wait for Dr. Fisher. Yeah, that went overboard first. Trip, are you still on? Well, I think John's out there doing a uh, post flight. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, hey, uh, Rick, you, have you guys got data back? Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Bo here. I'm wanting to know, know the status of it. We do have data. Okie dokie. And Bo's coming over the line. I'm going off. See you guys back in Houston. Super trip. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, testing. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Test 
Testing, testing, testing. One, two, three, testing. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, testing. Testing one, two, three. Making a wide sweeping turn now to get lined up with the okay. runway. Good television picture. 25,000 feet. Columbia Houston, about 3,000 feet. Columbia Houston, you can take the air data. Unofficial touchdown time and mission elapsed time is two days, six hours, 13 minutes, 10 seconds. Repeat that uh, mission elapsed time or touchdown, two days, six hours, 13 minutes. Astronaut Steve Nagel has relieved uh, astronaut uh, Rick Houck at the Capcom uh, console and will handle the power down procedures uh, till crew egress. Greeted by George Abbey, Director of Flight Operations at the Johnson Space Center. That's right. Point nine and speed brakes going to a hundred percent now. Three and a half minutes from touchdown. 
38,000 feet. Range 20 miles. Columbia Chase is coming aboard at 28.5. Thousand feet. Everything looking good. Airspeed two eighty five. Intersecting the hack now, passing twenty six thousand. Looks good. Two and a half minutes to touch down. Thirteen miles range. Turning right now into runway one seven. At 20,000 feet, airspeed 295, range 10 miles. Club Houston winds 190 at 1-4. where you go. Out of 15,000 feet. Two papillae, Houston. Airspeed 275. Go for auto to interglide slope. Go for auto at 12,000 feet. Okay, we're in auto, Houston. Columbia now in auto land. Out of 10,000 feet at 288. Body flaps and trail. Roger. Five thousand feet. Airspeed two eighty. Range about three miles. Three players. Roger. Thousand feet. Airspeed two ninety two. Still in auto. Fifty feet, gear coming. Here comes the gear. Gear down. Twenty. Ten. Five. Four. Touchdown. No gears. Ten. No gears. Five. Four. Three. The, the mission elapsed time of touchdown unofficially eight days, zero hours. Four minutes, 49 seconds. Okay, Columbia, welcome home. That was a beautiful job. Convoy 1, uh, Columbia, Ridge Line, clear, how many? Welcome home. Area 5, square 2. The mission itself was uh, just spectacular from end to end. I thought that the boost would be the most spectacular part. 
but all the scenery we saw, and then that uh, great toboggan ride down from upstairs was just one of the most uh, thrilling adventures, real high adventure of all time for me. I found uh, this flight uh, experience to be more interesting, more exciting, more fun, and just generally more of a kick than I uh, had anticipated. We really had a great flight, and the reason we had a great flight was because of most of you right out there. Without uh, your help, we couldn't have done it, and this was a great team effort. Everyone in the Moker and uh, in all areas of JSC and the surrounding communities have really uh, gotten behind us and uh, really done all the dog work and let us have the fantastic amount of fun that uh, the last nine days have been. We had a good spacecraft, and I think that the Columbia has demonstrated a maturity at this point in the program that uh, is really uh, maybe unexpected for some of us, but very happily received, and we look forward to lots more flights. It uh, was a machine that slowed down from 25 times the speed of sound to zero in about uh, 25 to 30 minutes, and uh, it had it. It felt like it just had the brakes on all the way, and uh, we had uh, one of the uh, most spectacular, quick tours at low altitude and high speed in the United States anybody will ever have. Just adds up to the the ride of a lifetime. Uh, there's nothing that will ever even remotely approach the feeling of uh, first stage. I think that America has really grabbed a hold of the space shuttle, and you know we're starting to assert ourselves in a national way again like we've been a little reluctant to do. And I think the administration that we have today uh, has started us in that direction. And Americans have grasped the space shuttle, the Columbia, the whole transportation system is something that is good about America. And America has a lot of good things going for it. And I think the space shuttle is one of them. And people are beginning to realize it and be proud of it. Uh, I believe that all of the, uh, the flights of the Columbia are uh or uh, America's flights, and uh, this was certainly uh, true to form in that respect. And I think that the Columbia and the space program does carry our colors around the world, and I think it's a demonstration of our, uh, of our national will and of our national resolve to be number one and to lead the world uh, and lead free men everywhere.
Columbia, Houston, disregard the VAP out. Now about five minutes from touchdown at 61,000 feet, Mach 1.3. Right. Columbia, Houston, cameras. Guidance now. 
Mummy will stay in auto land guidance until uh, 2,500 feet. And Mattingly will take over at uh, 2,500 feet for the landing. Knots at uh, 4,200 feet, 3,000. down and locked. Shuttle control here, the unofficial landing time, seven days, one hour, nine minutes, 40 seconds. To repeat, the unofficial landing time, seven days, one hour, nine minutes, 40 seconds. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. TK and Hank, you can see we've gotten well acquainted already. You've just given the American people a 4th of July present to remember. I think all of us, all of us who've just witnessed the magnificent sight of the Columbia touching down in the California desert, feel a real swelling of pride in our chest. In the early days of our republic, Americans watched Yankee clippers glide across the many oceans of the world, manned by proud and energetic individuals, breaking records for time and distance showing our flag and opening up new vistas of commerce and communications. Well, today, I think you have helped recreate the anticipation and excitement felt in those home ports as those gallant ships were spotted on the horizon heading in after a long voyage. Today, we celebrate the 206th anniversary of our independence. Through our history, we've never shrunk before a challenge. The conquest of new frontiers for the betterment of our homes and families is a crucial part of our national character, something which you so ably represent today. The space program in general, and the shuttle program in particular, have gone a long way to help our country recapture its spirit of vitality and confidence. The pioneer spirit still flourishes in America. In the future, as in the past, our freedom independence and national well-being will be tied to new achievements, new discoveries, and pushing back new frontiers. The fourth landing of the Columbia is the historical equivalent to the driving of the Golden Spike, which completed the first transcontinental railroad. It marks, it marks the, our entrance into a new era the test flights are over. The groundwork has been laid. And now we will move forward to capitalize on the tremendous potential offered by the ultimate frontier of space. Beginning with the next flight, the Columbia and her sister ships will be fully operational, ready to provide economical and routine access to space 
for scientific exploration, commercial ventures, and for tasks related to the national security. Simultaneously, we must look aggressively to the future by demonstrating the potential of the shuttle and establishing a more permanent presence in space. We've, we've only peered over the edge of our accomplishment. Yet already, the space program has improved the lives of every American. The aerospace industry provides meaningful employment to over a million of our citizens, many working directly on the space program. Others using the knowledge developed in space programs to keep us the world leader in aviation. In fact, technological innovations traced directly to the space program boost our standard of living and provide employment for our people in such diverse fields as communications, computers, health care, energy efficiency, consumer products, and environmental protection. It's been estimated, for example, that information from satellites has saved hundreds of millions of dollars per year in agriculture, shipping, and fishing. The space shuttle will open up even more impressive possibilities, permitting us to use the near weightlessness and near perfect vacuum of space to produce special alloys, metals, glasses, crystals, and biological materials impossible to manufacture on Earth. Similarly, in the area of national security, our space systems have opened unique opportunities for peace by providing advanced methods of verifying strategic arms control agreements. The shuttle we just saw land carried two kinds of payloads, one funded entirely by private industry, and the other related to our national security sponsored by the Air Force. This versatility of the Columbia and her sister ships will serve the American people well. Yet we must never forget that the benefits we receive are due to our country's commitment made a decade ago to remain the world leader in space technology. <laughs> to ensure that the American people keep reaping the benefits of space and to provide a general direction for our future efforts, I recently approved a national space policy statement which is being released today. Our goals for space are ambitious yet achievable. They include continued space activity for economic and scientific benefits, expanding private investment and involvement in space-related activities, promoting international uses of space, cooperating with other nations to maintain the freedom of space for all activities that enhance the security and welfare of mankind, strengthening our own security by exploring new methods of using space as a means of maintaining the peace. There are those who thought the closing of the Western frontier marked an end to America's greatest period of vitality. Yet we are crossing new frontiers every day. The high technology now being developed, much of it by byproduct of the space effort, offers us and future generations of Americans opportunities never dreamed of a few years ago. Today, we celebrate American independence, confident that the limits of our freedom and prosperity have again been expanded by meeting the challenge of the frontier. We also honor two pathfinders. They reaffirm to all of us that as long as there are frontiers to be explored and conquered, Americans will lead the way. They and the other astronauts have shown the world that Americans still have the know-how and Americans still have the true grit that tackled a savage wilderness. Charles Lindbergh once said that short-term survival may depend on the knowledge of nuclear physicists and the performance of supersonic aircraft, but long-term survival depends alone on the character of man. That, too, is our challenge. Hank and TK, we're proud of you. We need not fear for the future of our nation. 
as long as we've got men like you to serve as our inspiration. Thank you both, and God bless you for what you're doing. Before I introduce you, if you'll all just look, well, I'm sure down in front, maybe you can't see, but way out there on the end of the runway, the Space Shuttle Challenger, affixed atop a 747, is about to start on the first leg of a journey that will eventually put it into space in November. It's headed for Florida now, and I believe they're ready to take off. Challenger, you are free to take off now. And now, it's my pleasure to introduce to you two sons of Auburn, Captain T.K. Mattingly and Colonel Hank Hartsfield. Thank you. Mr. President, you, uh, you mentioned something about people having a desire to maintain a presence in space. Not very many hours ago, I know two guys who really wanted to maintain that presence in space a while longer. That is, uh, you never get tired of it. The most remarkable thing, besides the machine and the team that put it together, is that it's a new discovery every minute and every day. The machine we built is the first stepping stone. Here comes the second one. We're standing in front of its Pathfinder, and there's more to come. Where we're going to go in the future is something that depends on you. that's our second step. I'd like to thank you for being here today. It's really a privilege for us to be part of this celebration. I don't feel like it isn't our celebration at all. We were just lucky enough to be here. The people that make all this work are the thousands of designers and engineers that made it work. And as the president pointed out, all the technology in the world is just a tool. And the only thing that makes the difference between our technology and the trip that we've just had and the sights that we've seen and the things that we've thought and the ideas that that spurred, all the difference between that and just plain old technology is the people that made it happen. And the country is blessed with having a team that's dedicated to the United States and to the exploration and the exploitation of space. And I am just as proud as I can be be a part of that NASA team. Sure. The Chase plane has a video of Columbia on the monitors in the news center now. Altitude's 28,000 feet. Chase is coming aboard. on the heading alignment circle at 22,000 feet at an airspeed of 275 knots. Range is 11 miles. On the Houston, you're looking real good on the hack. feet now at an airspeed of 260 knots. Fourteen thousand feet. Okay, we show you right on the glide slope. This shot from ground.
on cameras now on the monitors in the news center. Right on the glide slope. touchdown time was five days, two hours, 14 minutes, 25 seconds. That unofficial touchdown time again, uh, five days, two hours, 14 minutes, 25 seconds. Columbia performing a maximum braking test on this landing. Hey, uh, Roy, are we down now? That was, uh, are we on the ground? Absolutely. It was beautiful, and you certainly lived up to your motto this flight. Welcome home. Yes, sir. We deliver. We delivered. Nice to be back. A lot of applause in the room here, and we're very happy to have all you guys home again. And uh, Houston CDR is standing by on the NH3 activation. Sorry, do we copy that? This is Shuttle Control. Capcom Bob Stewart is working with the crew on this power down. emerging now from Columbia. Okay, copy the Rats. Led by uh, Commander Vance Brand, then Bill Lenore, Bob Overmeyer, and Joe Allen. Okay, NH3 is off. 